the focus on environmental effects of mining have really ramped up in the past 12 to 18 months, um, focused around ESG narratives that are, you know, touching a lot of other, other industries besides Bitcoin. Um, so like, what is this exactly? Yeah, I mean, I actually went through my my email history to try to find the first time I ever saw ESG thrown at me in an email. <laughs> and it was in, in early 2019, actually. And my reply to the email, well, so what the question actually was, was, hey, can you give us um, a quick slide on our ESG impacts? It was for an investor relations slide. And my reply back is, what the hell is an ESG? Um, you know, I was thinking <laughs> operations. And so, I, you know, thinking like in oil and gas operations, we've got so many different acronyms for everything. And I'm like, how is there an acronym that I don't know right now? Yeah. And uh, the reply back was basically like, seriously. And so I'm like Googling it and I'm like, okay, so environmental, social governance. And I was like, okay, I got this. I'm like, why are we calling it ESG? Like pretty much every investor relations slide we've done for the last basically forever hits on all three of these things. But, you know, at that point in time, you're, you're not really seeing kind of where this is going. And so, you know, on the oil and gas side, we're like, well, the environmental, let's talk about some of the wins that we've had. And then on the social side, you say, okay, let's talk about, um, you know, how are we involved in our communities? What are we doing to be engaged in it? And, you know, what's our social license to operate? And then on the governance side, you say, you know, what is it that as a company, you know, we're doing to create long-term value for all of our stakeholders involved? And so you kind of look at it at a 30,000 foot view and you're like, yeah, I mean, ESG is basically a you know, a pathway to long-term value that you create for your company. I mean, if you don't have a positive ESG story, you probably don't have the right initiatives in mind. But I, somewhere along that way, that narrative got hijacked. And, you know, it's, it's changed to be within those three terms, there's only specific standards that are acceptable to give you a positive ESG score. Whereas, you know, looking back as to where it came from, it's very hard to argue that the idea or premise behind ESG is a bad thing because it's not. It's how it's been hijacked and coined to say, like, now these are the only acceptable things that will consider positive ESG. Whereas really all companies should have a long term value creation plan for their companies anyways. But that's just not the case with ESG anymore. The whole thing about ESG, it's all it's all for for the good, but it's you know the, the way they're administering it, it's becoming this uh, secondary system of account. So for the first time in history, like a company now has to instead of you know basing your business around you know generating profits and and look, all companies are already motivated to do good work in the community. It's not something that you need some third party administrator to enforce. Um, it's already part of like social fabric to hire local people, create jobs, do good things. I mean, there's not a company out there trying to uh, do bad for the environment. Now, when when companies do bad things for the environment, like dump crap into the rivers and stuff, that's why we have regulatory agencies in place to try to curtail that kind of thing. But at this point, like, especially when it comes to like oil and gas, ESG, the, the E side of the ESG is the biggest thing. It's the environmental footprint and it's the, in particular, the carbon accounting uh, aspect of it. How much carbon emissions do you have? Um, oh, you have too much? Well, you have to pay us money now because we're the carbon accountants and this is, this is our divine right to strip you of that money and we'll spend it instead of you because we're better than you. And that's sort of what the, it's this secondary accounting system now. It's no longer about like a business, it's no longer about building a good business, creating a great product, making a margin and growing your business and offering something the world wants and needs. Now you have this second layer of accounting on top of it the carbon accounting and the ESG accounting, they not only do you have to be a good business with a good product, you actually have to have this entire other accounting system that is completely subjective. Like who who is administering this? What why are they why is this project qualify and this one doesn't? And there's so much uh, pathway for corruption and bureaucracy in there, and it's pretty clear that it's happening. I can tell you, like uh, you know, like uh, it's so easy to discriminate against a company if you don't understand what they're doing or maybe not even discriminate, but just not properly, uh, say, allocate the benefits that they're, you know, the ESG benefits that they're offering. Like early on when I started my business, 
I was like, oh, well, we're going to be doing a lot of emissions reduction stuff. This is great. I went and applied for all this, like, uh, uh, this is really early on. I went and was like, oh, we're going to do emission stuff. Let's apply for these emissions programs. And we would we easily had the best value proposition around, uh, especially for this upstream oil field stuff. And we weren't successful on anything that we did because at the end of the day, there's someone sitting in a chair in their cubicle looking at someone's application. They don't they don't get it. They don't understand it. And they say, no, you're not, you're not, you don't fit the bill uh, and throw it out. Like it's, it, it's not a natural business mechanism. It's a bureaucrat, like top down administrative mechanism. And honestly, it's pure evil and should be resisted at all costs. <laughs> Marty would agree, don't you, Marty? I, I know Marty agrees. Marty, jump in there. <laughs> I do agree. Uh, and what Ryan and Steve have described up to this point has been incredible. I, I wholeheartedly agree with everything they've said. And I, I think just to add uh, something to this conversation, uh, somebody I've been reading their blog on this subject uh, recently is Eswath uh, Damodaran. And he's a professor at NYU uh, Stern School of Business. And I think he has a very interesting uh, explanation for why ESG has gotten to where it is today to, to the point where it's like this weird totalitarian uh, allocation of capital strategy. And he describes basically it's, it's an abdication of individuals at the end of the day. They don't want to actually do good in their own lives. They want to, to push that responsibility onto the companies and the investment advisors they're doing business with. They're, they're sort of giving this decision on how to be a good consumer to the investment class. And then they're pushing that up to the corporate class. And it's sort of uh, dictating what is being done and the, the standards that are being architected that, that now people have to fall into or they don't get capital. And so it's this weird roundabout thing where, where individuals don't want to take responsibility and actually uh, act in, in a way in which they're, they're helping the environment and being cognizant of, of how much they're consuming and what they're consuming and the impact of that on the environment. They're, they're pushing that decision elsewhere and it's, it's creating this weird Frankenstein system of, of allocating capital. Um, and then it, it, he dropped a blog post yesterday. Uh, I think he does an incredible job of highlighting the subjective nature of ESG that, that Steve alluded to earlier, where it's just you're never going to have these standards are never going to work because everything's subjective. People have different value systems and, and they value things in, in the economy differently and have different you know, sort of pro cons with each economic decision. Like there's no form fit ESG metrics that everybody's going to fall into. You're, you're essentially uh, reducing everybody to an input in a, in a very uh, mathematic function. And that's just not the way humans work. We're, we're social animals. We have free will, we have differences of opinion, and you can't uh, basically force a metric system of, of the subjective concept of good onto the whole market. 